In this video, we're going to be learning about congressional reconstruction. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain why Republicans in Congress reject Andrew Johnson's reconstruction plan. You should be able to describe what the radical Republicans want. Uh, you should be able to discuss Congress's plan for reforming the South and say what the 14th and 15th Amendments were all about. And you should be able to describe how Southern whites react to Congressional Reconstruction. So the first stage of Reconstruction was dominated by Abraham Lincoln's and later Andrew Johnson's lenient plans for reintegrating the Southern states into the United States. Uh, but things began to change in 1866 when Republicans uh, won a two-thirds majority in Congress, and this gave them enough votes to override a presidential veto. What that means is that Congress can pass any law that it wants, and the president is powerless to stop it. Um, and so what happened is uh, presidential reconstruction seemed too lenient to most Republicans. They thought that uh, Andrew Johnson wasn't forcing the South to change enough. He didn't, uh, Johnson didn't want to do anything to stop the black codes, and uh, he didn't really care about forcing the South to change. Uh, Republicans in Congress disliked this, and because they could pass whatever law they wanted to, they decided to create their own plan for reconstruction and to reconstruct the South the way they wanted to, rather than listening to Johnson. So Congress comes up with a much harsher plan for Reconstruction than the one insisted on by Andrew Johnson. And in this one, they basically decide to force the South to change before they would be allowed back in the Union. So the South is not going to get to vote in Congress, it's not going to have any political authority in the country until it makes these changes. Um, and the two big changes that they have to make are they have to ratify the 14th Amendment, which we're going to talk about in a second, and they have to change their state constitution in order to allow black men to vote. And um, until this happened, the South was going to be occupied by a northern army, and the northern army would enforce justice and keep the peace until uh, the southern states had done these two things. Later, uh, Congress would go on to pass the 15th Amendment, which we're also going to talk about in a minute. The 14th Amendment is the cornerstone of the Congressional Plan for Reconstruction. Uh, and so basically the Southern states had to sign off on the 14th Amendment before they would be allowed back into the Union. And the four main things said by the 14th Amendment uh, were all crucial. Number one was that freedmen would have civil rights. And that is that they would get protection of their rights, uh, and that they would have legal equality to whites, and they would be allowed to own property and other important stuff like that. Two, uh, states that denied freedmen the vote would lose votes in Congress. So if they tried to block um, black people from voting, that would mean that they would not get as many votes in the federal government. Three, they prevented the old Southern leaders from returning to Congress. Uh, so that meant that the South wasn't allowed to re-elect all of their rebel leaders and make them um, their representatives once again. And fourth, it forced the South to help pay off Union war debt. And this increased Southern taxes like by a whole lot and made the South pretty upset. Uh, there was one major weakness of the 14th Amendment, and this was that it wasn't strong enough to prevent states from barring black voters. So many states, even northern states, were willing to prevent black men from voting uh, and accept the loss of votes rather than to allow for equality at the polls. The 15th Amendment was enacted a little bit later, and it was enacted because the 14th Amendment was not strong enough to protect the voting rights of African Americans, as I just mentioned. And thus, the 15th Amendment uh, was passed in 1870, 
and it made it illegal for states to deny the vote to somebody on the basis of race. Uh, and the idea was that this would be strong enough to protect the rights of African-American voters in the South. As we will see later, it was not, because Southern states would make up other reasons that apparently had nothing to do with race, but that would effectively block black voters from voting. Congressional Reconstruction had wide-reaching um, consequences. First, many Southerners hated the North more for Reconstruction than they did for the Civil War. They thought that the North coming down to the South using soldiers to force change and totally altering the, the structure of Southern society was totally wrong. By 1870, all of the Southern states, even though they disliked this, had accepted the terms of Congressional Reconstruction and they were allowed to become normal states once again. So what that means is they accepted the 14th Amendment and they made it so that uh, black people would be allowed to vote, or at least black men. Women were not allowed to vote at all, regardless of their race. Um, for a little while, Southern black people enjoyed political rights, uh, but it was only for a few years. This was because within, by 1877, within seven years, of the 15th Amendment, all the southern states would once again establish racist governments. These were called redeemer governments because they seemed to restore the South to its old, uh, its old ways. And these governments effectively excluded black people from politics. And so uh, radical reconstruction went in and made a lot of change for a little bit of time, but by the end, uh, you know, within 10 years, things had basically gone back to the way they were before. And we'll talk more about why this is in later videos. Again, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.